My name is Wongile Pamela Kusema. I am a social worker by profession, currently working with Cambridgeshire County Council as a senior social worker and have been working with them for the last three years now. So I was born and raised in Zimbabwe and grew up in a small city called Mutare. Um, so I've been in the UK for about nearly coming to 19 years now this year. So after I finished high school, my A-levels, I studied at Africa University and I studied, I did a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Sociology. Studying at Africa University, if I'm going to be honest, I don't think I really knew what I wanted to do then. I kind of almost landed in that, in that um, field, but I did enjoy the psychology aspect of it. Um, but unfortunately, the study was very classroom based. So everything was theory based, classroom based. And when I then decided to come here to join family, the plan was to continue on to do a master's um, in the social sciences. Not really sure what I was going to do. Initially, I'd found a job um, with human resources because a lot of people that studied the psychology and sociology ended up with human resources posts or working for non-governmental organizations which were the options that I was looking at but obviously my path took me on a very different road altogether and I ended up in the UK. So I finished my degree in Zimbabwe, um, my psychology and sociology degree and moved to the UK pretty much soon after that, a few months after that. And like I said, initially I wanted to study, like continue to do a master's, but it was very difficult um, because that was 2002. I wasn't able to get into a master's program for anything um, because they didn't necessarily recognize my degree. And because I hadn't been here, I think that's when things have started to change quite a lot in the UK where it wasn't so easy to just go into doing any course and because I kind of knew as well where I wanted to end up, I didn't want to end, to just apply for anything and sort of waste time to get anything. So it took a very long time, a very, very long time about, um, um, so it took a long time to try and get, you know, to do, to, to do the job that I wanted to do because by then I decided I wanted to be a social worker. Um, and I got married in between that so kind of relaxed a little bit but the honest truth was at the same time it was really difficult to try and sort out you know immigration status which was a hindrance and also just not being able to get into the programs that i wanted to get in because i was very much following the path that we know from when we come from zimbabwe you know you do a bachelor's then you do a master's then you do a phd which was the progression that i wanted to do but after a while i then had to kind of take a seat back and really think about how I want to progress. And because I really wanted to become a social worker, I had to go and do another bachelor's degree. So I did a BSc in social work at Northampton University, which I finished in 2012. So from when I finished from, there's like a 10 year gap, I was working, but not like a professional job, just anything to kind of keep me going. Um, so I finished 20, no, 2013, sorry, 2013, but then I had my second child then, so kind of took a bit of a year out and then started working in 2015 as an official registered social worker um, with, then it was called British Association of Social Workers, I think, but now it's called Social Work England. So, um, my first job was as an unqualified social worker because again it was very difficult to get into a social worker qualified because everybody wants experience and because of the type of placements that you would have done and you know depending on how available you were i had a small baby which i had to obviously consider when i was trying to get into jobs and then I ended up with um, a, a job as a mental health social worker which I absolutely loved absolutely absolutely loved so I did three years as 
a mental health social worker. And then after a while, because of the type of cases that I enjoyed working, I didn't really take good care of my own well-being and they took quite a, a, a big toll on me emotionally and other personal life things that were going on as well. And so I decided to leave that job and went on to be a locum or an independent social worker because I didn't really know what exactly I wanted to do. Um, and then I ended up in Cambridge County Council. So I started off as a locum with the team as a social worker, just as a locum. And then a position for a senior social worker came up and I applied and I got the job and have been there since then. So really, as much as I am my age, my progression to be like a professional has taken very, very long. And I suppose it's kind of a testament that, you know, if you really know what you want to do, then keep at it. It's, you know, you will get there eventually. I think the biggest mistake that I can say, probably because when I came, I had not done any research. I, I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't really think about how I would get there, what I needed to get there. I kind of just got on the plane and assumed that the same way you apply at University of Zimbabwe is the same way, you know, as long as you've got good grades, which I had good grades, I just automatically thought things worked the same. I didn't really do my research, which was really, 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 really you know, um, quite detrimental to me not being able to get there faster but i'm happy now i'm happy now i am progressing very very quickly very quickly very fast and yeah end goal is to do therapy because i love mental health um at the moment i work with the older people's team which works largely side by side with 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 mental health because obviously you're dealing with people with alzheimer's dementia you know mental health issues so i'm still i've still got my foot in mental health and that really is my passion which i think i have to be honest and say i've probably discovered much much later on i've always known i want to work with people but in what capacity so i think in the last few years that's when i've really really discovered what my passion is and that's what i'm now trying to grow so getting back into the classroom after about <laughs> nearly 10 years um, in a different environment, uh, different circumstances with so many responsibilities was not easy. I will not even lie, was not easy. What got me through was really just the passion and the drive of knowing where I want to be in the end. So I was working part-time as, as a care assistant or a support worker, if you like, or personal assistant, you know, we give it different names. And also a mother to a one and a half year old when I started my course and also married. So juggling the three, you just had to be super organized. But as a as a general rule of thumb, I'm, I'm kind of am like that now. So it would be go to a night shift, and then that's where I'll do my assignments. You know, when you finish that time, when it's a little bit quiet and the the patients or residents are sleeping, that's when I would do my assignments. And then in the morning, you get home, quick shower, sort out the child, drop him off at daycare. Then you spend the whole day in university and repeat and repeat. So I did that for years. But I think after... A while in in my second year, probably in the middle of my second year, I couldn't do it anymore. It was like one thing is going to fail. You know, it's either I'm going to fail my degree. So I decided to sacrifice not working, which was really hard because obviously then it means income wise, I was really affected. But I had to do that because, like I said, it was a long journey that taken me almost 10 years to get back into the classroom for somebody who was always quite intelligent, you know, and never failed to then think, you know, I could potentially fail and then have to add more years to an already delayed journey in my career progression. So I gave up work in 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 my in the middle of my second year, um, which we obviously took a big hit income wise that was coming into the family, um, but uh, managed to survive because I used to and get grants. I think at that time, the status that I had, my immigration status that I had 
was just enough for me to, I had to pay my own fees, by the way. So <laughs> you can imagine. Um, but my immigration status that I had at that time allowed me to get some small bursaries and whatnot. So that's, it just had to make it stretch. And then the odd shift here and there and just a lot of sacrifices and pure grace of God. That's how I managed to get through that. Um, I think specifically because of my my own career journey, the, the, the challenges that I face are not peculiar to me or as an immigrant, they're not that peculiar. You know, the usual people want experience, you can't apply for this job and whatnot. But I would say in, as a profession in general, especially um, children, social workers, I think one of the biggest challenges that we they face i will say we but i don't work as a child social worker um is is some of the things that you know it's like in child protection some of the things that they they are taking away children for or are having to work with you know where a norm so you know to 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 switch that mindset <laughs> to say this is now you know i'll, I'll give a, a common one like smacking children and you know where you've come from a culture where you're naughty, the disciplinary method is is smack on the, you know, like that. And so I, I would say that's one of the challenges that they probably face. And the hours, I mean, it, it is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Like sometimes you don't finish work until, you know, it's not a proper nine to five job. Um, so sometimes you know you are like now when we're working from home we've been working from home through the lockdown you're logged on half seven and sometimes nine o'clock you're still there it's just not a very friendly job in terms of work hours depending on how you organize yourself and all of that and not the greatest i think for the amount of work that we do sometimes it's not the greatest paying profession as well so that's why you find a lot of people do prefer to go and be low comes because you get paid a little bit more money so at least you feel you know at the end of the month i've got a little bit more in my pocket so maybe it is worth it and the the what do you call it you get tired very quickly i think statistics or research show that after seven years normally you know the, the social workers are tired like probably have a complete change of career because it is that taxing emotionally, mentally, physically, um, and socially as well sometimes. And the stigma that is associated with being a social worker, the minute you open your mouth and say, I'm a social worker, the first thing people say, oh yeah, those people that want to take our children, but there's so much more to the profession than just taking people's children. And they're not just taken willy-nilly. So I, I would say maybe that's the, there's a bit of a negative, um, identity with being a social worker because of media and high profile cases that have happened where you know and the, the good work the hard work the sacrifices that are done are never spoken about in the media i think the first thing i would probably advise anyone is know what you want know what you want to do um, i think that's very important in in choosing your career i think we come from a society because obviously i said from zimbabwe where a career means being a doctor, being a lawyer, being an accountant, but there is so much that you can do. What I have learned from the British system is studying a particular course doesn't always just land you in one specific job. Like when we, you know, in the early years of moving or migrating here, you had um, Zimbabwean children, you know, parents with Zimbabwean children that wanted to study music and it's like, it doesn't make you know what kind of a career is that but studying music doesn't mean that somebody wants to be a dancehall artist studying music might mean that they're working behind production of movies of 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 tv stations of radio stations of you know in theaters in and i think we are not very exposed to that i think i mentioned earlier that the one thing i had not done was do my research to find out what are my options how do i get there how can I get there? What do I need? You know, where where can where is the best place to do this? You know, I literally identified 
I can move to the UK. I will be comfortable because there's family there and you know, the rest will sort it out when we're there. So I think before you move to go anyway, just really know where you're going, really know what you want to do, have researched the courses and everything that's involved, you know, in terms of immigration, um, people never really tell you the truth. People will scam you. Um, but, re you know, there's loads of forums and loads of, of websites for the countries that you want to go to where they would tell you exactly what you need. Um, this, I, I, you know, sometimes I know there's, there's, there's a lot of pressure because you've finished. Therefore, the next step is, 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 is to do this. Here in the UK, it's very common for children to take a gap year after they finish their high school because they want to figure out who they are, who they want to be. I'm not encouraging it because I know <laughs> in our culture, it's not the most um, advised, but I think sometimes there is an advantage to that in that, you know, it gives you time to grow and really think about what you want to do. And I think if you go for a course just because the next thing is for you to go to university, uh, for me, it's a waste of time. You're not going to do well. And that's why you find somebody goes three years without stepping into a lecture room because they're not passionate about it. I said myself, I was doing it as a mom, as a wife, as, you know, as, as, as somebody who needs to earn money. If you're passionate enough about something, then nothing will stand in your way. You will do whatever it takes to make sure that you achieve that course. Don't do something because that's the expectation from your family. I actually know a funny story about somebody who's also a social worker from Zimbabwe who's here and they absolutely hate it. And they just ended up doing it. So <laughs> how do you do three years just doing a course that you don't actually want to do or something that you want to do in life? So, you know, I think it's really important if you decide you want to be a doctor what kind of a doctor what are your options if this doesn't work what's plan b if that doesn't work what's plan c um where is the best place and also to identify i think a course or a career path that even if you move to i don't know the most iceland or something i don't i can't think of somewhere where it's not where you can use that profession somehow somewhere and i think that's one of the biggest issues that we have that we have courses and these degrees that we do sometimes in our Zimbabwe universities but are not very applicable. Like I said, I had a whole bachelor's degree, a 2.1, which meant absolutely nothing, you know, but in Zimbabwe I was something. So it's really understanding what, what you know, choose a career path that even if things change, the society changed, your world changed and you ended up leaving, you know, living in New Zealand, then you can still use that profession you still you know make yourself marketable anywhere and everywhere in the world that would be my advice i think when you're starting out in your career it's always daunting it's always a scary thing um don't give yourself pressure to think that you need to demonstrate that you know everything you don't have to know everything because your career identity grows and changes every single day you know the person the the social worker I was last year is completely changed from what I am today. There's so many opportunities to keep growing in that career. And I think a lot of professions, you know, I can only speak from the UK because that's where I've really worked. So um, you are kind of protected, you know, in your first year, there's a lot of support. Use that support. Don't sort of, you know, don't, don't do this thing that, you know, you have to be there. If you're struggling, then let someone know it's not a sign of weakness but then you can get the support that you need instead of just you know continuing thinking that this is you know me showing them giving them a good impression that i am able to do the job you've been hired for a reason you have obviously shown them something that they 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 like that that you can do the job and have confidence in yourself and enjoy yourself honestly just really enjoy yourself that's all i would say I think my one desire for Africa or Africans is um, first looking at my own profession is to have a social service system that actually works. Um, I was very shocked to discover all the things that a um, social worker can do or social services can do, which I was not aware of in my own country, whether other countries have that. I, I, I 
I I don't know, but I think it's it's just to have a um, humanitarian aspect. At the moment, you know, we find there's a lot of greed, a lot of there's so much that we can do to make our societies a lot better without having to wait for donations, rely on the West or anything like that. I think we have it. It's within our gift to be able to 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 create a society that is beautiful for the generations to come but we have just been messed up with you know difficult political situations difficult economic situations um and really my desire would be one day to be able to kind of you know be to stand very proud i mean i'm a proud african but sometimes it's very difficult with the things that happen there to you know to to catch up somewhere to still maintain our african africanism but still just be a society that we can be the bread basket of the world again if if that is possible you know so better economies better so, society so social systems better political you know campaigns governments and all of that